without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. And the top of the afternoon to you, Miss Ginger. Hey, John. Hi. This is fun. It's noon in Houston, and so I don't know what time it is where you're watching, but this is early for John and I. I want you to know we're just barely getting our day rolling. We have to really scramble to get up here at noon to do a live show. But we're happy to do it because the reason we've picked this time, a couple of reasons, is that uh, some of our friends that are in Europe, you know, if we do a 7.30 show, they're, they're in the middle of the night trying to watch it. So we tried to make it where people in other parts of the world might find it a little more convenient to watch a live show. One of the things we'll be doing on the show, besides doing showing you how to paint these peaches and this, uh, this tree, is also at the end of the show for our live audience only, we'll be doing, well, of course you guys can watch it even if you're watching this later, but... Um, but our, the audience that's with us while we're filming this live has the opportunity to enter a drawing for an original Ginger Cook painting that I will do at the end of the show in about 10 minutes or so. The, the, the live studio so audience. The, for the live studio audience. Does that make sense? A, yeah, so we always have that joke about, you know, who's live and who's not. But basically, that's what we're doing. So we're going to... This is a fun This is a fun show. You'll, John is uh, on the camera. You'll see him on the video, too. Um, he and I put these shows on together. Now, if you're the kind of person that gets very distracted when you're trying to learn something from a step, you know, you just need total quiet and step-by-step -step instruction and nobody talking, the best way to see a video like that, we have a few on YouTube where we travel and sometimes it's just my voice and hands, but on our website, gingercooklive.gallery, we over have over 300 videos that are shot just that way. It's just you and me, I'm talking to you about how to paint something. But we try to have a little fun here, a little humor, we never know how these are t turning out. You know, we have no, like, for instance, most television shows, when they go live, there's some way they can delete or bleep a comment from before it gets out. But whatever I say, the foot gets out. And if you're typing your comments on and you're watching us uh, live and you're in chatting in the chat room, uh, what happens is those kind of stay up forever. So kind of think about what you're saying here because your name will be right next to whatever you said. Unless, of course, we delete you completely and you've said something really rude or something. We have Our moderators will be deleting you off. Now, who are our moderators today? I know Liz is traveling. Judy's got guests. Who have we got today, right? <laughs> Looks like we have Mona and Mona and Mona. Hey, Mona. And Mona. And Mona. And Mona. Mona's in Sweden, you guys. So, I mean, this is what we're saying. So, anyway, thanks, Mona, for being here because I think everybody else said, you know, Sunday is not the best time for most people in the States to watch it. So I hope we have a nice group of people watching today. And uh, what I'm featuring today, the original artist that did this painting first was done in 1864 by an artist, an American artist. His name was uh, Whitridge, Thomas Whitridge, Whitridge, Williams Whitridge. And he was born in a log cabin, this is so cool, in 1810 in Ohio. Um, he Eventually, as a, as a young adult, he went to Europe and he studied at uh, the Dusseldorf School of Fine Art in Germany. And then he uh, painted in Paris. Was in part of, if you look up his history on uh, Wikipedia, he's, he, he was really an accomplished artist. His main thing probably was uh, portraits, and he did a lot of uh, landscapes in the, from the American West, are very pretty. But I, I really like this peach um, painting, and if John will be so kind as to. Uh, focus our camera down on our table. You can kind of see what we're talking about. I really like this. I just thought it was a. Uh, it would be something I could teach easily. It's a good example of contrast of light and dark contrast. Um, you'll notice that there's three peaches here, and then one, two, three, four, five here. Kind of. That's one of the rules of of, of painting. You know, kind of cluster things have threes, fives, sevens, odd, odd numbers. Uh, and also, Judy's here. 
Hey, Judy, I wasn't sure. Apparently she wasn't chatting when all the moan conversation was going on. Well, well, I thought, I, I knew that Judy had company today, so we didn't expect her to be here, so she's here. Well, see, I was going off your lead because you're the queen. Well, I mean, I watched, I read the chat this morning. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I read the chat this morning. That's what I thought she said. But and nonetheless, we're glad Judy's here, too. Um, and also, Judy's also manning our um, Facebook page. And if it, I'll tell you what, we have a Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club on Facebook, which we've opened the doors to. We decided it's going to be much more fun if we have more members. And so we've opened the doors to that. You just have to read the rules and answer a few questions, and you're in like Flint. And I will tell you more about why you might want to join that, because you're going to find out what's, what's up and doing with, the, with Ginger and John if you're a Facebook uh, club member. Uh, we're starting on a six by eight canvas. This is real canvas, you guys. This we're isn't. Pause for a moment. We're pausing for these in person, personal messages. We're pausing. Yeah. We're focusing. No, the we're not focusing. The colors off. The colors off. John is very particular about how the color is, so he is focusing everything. Hey, do you know what tip? Would you like to know a tip of the day while he's doing that? If you're painting something with a lot of color there may come a time when you can't even see the values and colors anymore. Get a piece of gray cardboard like this, have it off to the side, and after you're painting for a while, and something, particularly when you're using bright colors, just stare at it a few minutes and it resets your eyes just like that gray card was resetting the camera. Did you know that? I mean, I, I discovered that because I had this student uh, oh, when I was teaching better. at Jerry's and I had, I'd, I'd come, you know, I'd kind of walk around the table between all 12 students that were there and I'd make comments, and then I'd, by the time I made it back around, I'd make the same comment. And about the third time I made it around the table, and I'm telling her the same thing, I'm going, I could tell that, she, you know, I kept telling her to change the color. She couldn't see it. And uh, then later, after some research, you know, we discovered that what happens to the eyes is if you stare at colors for too long, your eyes just kind of like felt smelling perfume. You know, if you've ever been to a perfume counter and they'll let you smell about three, but after that, unless you uh, sniff some coffee beans or something, you can't tell what anything smells like anymore. That can happen to your color perception. So uh, that's what you do. You just kind of look at a gray card for a while, neutral gray card, just for a few minutes and then come back and see if you don't see the colors a little bit better in your values. I think that's kind of neat. So that was, that was a serendipitous, did you know, Ooh, wasn't it? Ooh, a serendipitous. Did serendipitous, you know? Serendipitous, did you know? Can you and spell serendipitous? You, no. I couldn't even begin. But you know what I've discovered? I've got this a little the round device that sits on my, uh, by my computer that's uh, <laughs> sold by the A-M-A-Z-O-N. If I say the word, they'll all start talking. <laughs> and all I have to ask them is how to spell something. And I immediately I'm told. So I'm typing away and I come to a word like serendipitous. And I would just say, blah, blah, how do you spell ser serendipitous? Of course, the blah, blah would be the name of the device. We have so many devices. They all have different names. And uh, they tell me. It's just really so good. It's so much better than a dictionary. Oh, so much easier. And so fast. Okay, so back to this. Um, if you're still with me here, we'd love it. If you had not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It's kind of a, you know, when you subscribe, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a nice way of kind of, you kind of vote for the art. You know, vote for us in that you think that we're fun and, and make sure that you're, if you haven't been to our channel in a while, chances are uh, YouTube might have deleted you as a subscriber. They just do that. They say they don't, but we have noticed and that sometimes that happens. And so make sure you are subscribed and there's a little bell down at the bottom uh, there on, the, on your screen. And if you click that, supposedly, you know, in the so great white world of babies, around it. you're supposed to, what, what, what's you around want it? You want the cartoon quotes around it. There's some cartoon quotes around it, okay? There, uh, the little bell thing, it, you know, then when we go live, sometimes John and I will just decide to do a live show out of the, show out of the blue, but whatever, you'll, you'll be notified, or supposedly, you're supposedly. supposed to be notified. Doesn't always happen, but, you know, isn't this amazing? We're talking to people all over the world, and I'm sitting here in Texas. So you, you got to give a big applause to the, the technology. All right, so do we we've have got to? A, yeah, we do. Okay. We really do. I mean, it's really pretty exciting. So uh, this is just, a, like I started to say, a real piece of canvas, and it's come to mind uh, through um, misleading advertising that you will co go to the art store and you'll see a tablet of paper that's obviously cheaper than canvas, and it will say good for acrylics. Um, no, it's not good for the type of acrylic painting that we're doing. It's fine for watercolor effects, 
But if you try to do all the blending and crazy stuff we do on, on normal oil painting style of painting with acrylics, it doesn't work, and then you think it's you, and it's not you. Okay, so it's good to I mean, it's good to know that because honestly, if you read if you read the disclaimer, you'd swear that's what it said it was for. And I we have a lot of of, of students in our academy. Many of them take advantage of our personal art coaching, and this is one of the b biggest hurdles for people as they decided just to practice they do the inexpensive paper and then they weren't able to do the techniques and thought it was them okay so if you like this picture um this was one we did a uh, i don't know a couple years ago um that um, i think kind of goes nicely with it this is a ginger cook original piece that i did from a photograph i had found on a, i think paint my photo and that tutorial is on our website gingercooklive.gallery you just have to type in apples a search engine to find it all right and um, we're going to just start on this now the colors we're going to be using uh, this is uh, our yellow oxide cad yellow medium dosnine pur purple ultramarine blue thalo blue burnt umber burnt sienna cad red medium and magenta and you notice that recently i got some holbein paint and i'm just going to use it because it's sitting here how's that okay but I will say that one thing about it, the caps, even after three or four uses, the caps are going on nicely. That's always a big thing with me. I don't know about you. And one thing I discovered about that, I figured out why I was using so much yellow paint. Um, when I've been painting a lot of stuff with green in it, then that takes a lot of yellow. And the other thing is, it takes such a tiny amount of blue to change the yellow, uh, much, much less uh, pigment than with other brands of acrylic, which was interesting to me. So... Part, you know, I'm mixing it the way I would do, say, um, Matisse or Golden, and I found that I kept having to dump more yellow into the mixture to get the color I wanted, and I finally decided that that probably was it. So here's some Thalo Blue. You know, Liquitex came out with, some years ago, they came out with Thalo Blue Green Shade and Red Shade, which is screwy. I, I don't know why they did it, um, but they did. So Thalo Blue Red Shade is more like Ultramarine Blue, so you want the thalo, thalo blue green shade, but then they did ultramarine blue red shade and green shade, and you want ultramarine blue red shade. Here's purple. That goes over here. Got a little talking about that. And Dosney purple is a wonderful purple color, and while you can mix a purple using red and green, Dosney purple is sort of such a pure pigmented color, it's really not something you can mix to get that bright colored purple. So if you don't want anything that bright, so how do, you, um, how do you turn off purple if it's too bright? I'm looking for my color wheel here. I had one somewhere. But it, basically, you add a little yellow to purple. And the reason you do that is because um, uh, yellow is opposite purple on the color wheel. And it was a tiny amount of yellow will just sort of tone that purple back. And magenta is another one that's an, kind of an artificial color. It's called quadrochrome, quadrochrome magenta. And this is, uh, let me see if I can find that. I had it out here somewhere. Somewhere, that's cad red. This must be it. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a color, again, you can't mix. You can't turn around with red and white and pinks and all this stuff and get this. So if you like that sort of um, magenta violet color, that's, a, that's kind of a color that you almost have to have. Um, Lizard and Crimson is one that you, we don't see in my palette very often. You'll see that if you buy an oil painting kit, they always throw in a Lizard and Crimson. That's more of a wine color, and even if you add some whites and red to that, you still won't get that bright magenta, though it's a nice color. It's a nice, it's a nice color. So are they, these the only colors one should have out on a palette? No, these are just the ones I use, and I try to keep it pretty consistent. So. Um, I, every once in a while, I might introduce a new color, you know, one that you haven't seen. You know, I might do that. But my goal in this, you guys, is so that, you know, once you have this basic set of colors, pretty much any video you watch of mine on YouTube or in my Art Academy, with the exception of some of our more advanced lessons, you should be able to just have the supplies. Because there's nothing, and I think you'll all agree with me, more frustrating than having... Um, uh, a pile of, um, you know, a big project and all your paint and you're missing one color. Because that is really, um, you know, that's, that just is upsetting, isn't it? So you don't, wouldn't want that to happen. Okay, so in the, uh, in the Holbein, 
which is made in Japan. I got a big titanium white. I'm going to save the little one for travel. Um, I'm going to just put out a row of white here like that, like a log. Always do that. You always need more white. Whenever I travel, I take a giant, you know, if I'm going to be gone for a long time, like at least a month, I'll always take a giant tube of white. I probably can make do with small tubes like this for everything else, but for sure a giant tube of white. Okay, so uh, if you've got a blue, if you've got some sort of blue background, maybe green background, it doesn't really matter. Any questions, John, before we start? Um, what day is it in New Zealand? It's well, Monday. what day is it in New Zealand? I don't know. It's Sunday here. And so it's Monday some, there. So I think it's Monday there. You guys are like a day ahead of us. <laughs> that was just a question that went by. No, we don't have anything for you. Okay, so we're just going to come in here, kind of do something like that. How's that? That's pretty good. You can kind of see what I did about halfway and halfway, and then just kind of made a loop down here, just close enough. You hear thunder and lightning in the background. We're having quite a storm. If we disappear on you, so sorry, we're having a storm. Are you recording this, John? I am. So if for some reason we should lose the feed, right, and, and, and you know our Internet or something goes out, what we're going to do we're, we're recording this, and we'll just have to upload it, and um, it'll be, um, uh, and everybody will um, not, not have be the a live, live audience. We won't, we'll, well, we won't have the giveaway then, because we won't be live, but cross your fingers, <laughs> okay? So, all right, so I want some white here. This is a little ruby satin silver um, half-inch brush angle, and I'm going to take a little tiny bit, like t tiniest amount, right, like, like nothing, and look at how that changed that... Um, it's a very strong pigment paint. Was that? Th that looks like thalo blue. No, that's ultramarine. There you go. That's purple. What happened there? This is ultramarine. <laughs> all right, there's some purple. Well, all right, I like that. So, okay, I, I remember now a little bit more white, but it really changed it quickly, didn't it? So I want to come up here and do it. I've got to make sure I did put ultramarine blue out. What's that? I know that was, it's called ultramarine blue deep. I think I did put that out, though it looked very, that looks very thalo blue to me. I think I did. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I put thalo blue out twice. Oh, well, we'll need it for the green. All right, here's a little more thalo blue, uh, ultramarine blue in that. Ha. Huh. Okay, now we've got a nice color. You know, there's cerulean blue and all these different blues, but pretty much between thalo blue and ultramarine blue, you can get a lot of different shades of blue, particularly if you add a little purple to it. All right, so I'm going to come up here like that. Just to, See, now watch this brush going here and here and here and here, almost like little X's. And I do it real quickly and just paint this um, over like that. All right, this is sort of fun. We've, John and I have had a really good week. I hope you guys have had a, had a good week. We, um, we have been trying to get ahead on videos. And so we've been nothing all but all week, but we have been uh, filming uh, videos. We have a big... Um, that we planned last year. We have a big trip coming up in November through the Panama Canal. I know, over Thanksgiving and everything. And uh, so we leave out of Miami, and we want to make sure we have enough videos for everybody when we do that. Now, now I'm out of paint, and um, also it's getting down where I need a little white. So I'm just going to put a little white on my brush like this because I want it lighter as it gets down here anyway. So I'm just going to kind of mix that in using that sort of crisscross pattern like that. Just sort of, nothing has to be too perfect. Now, what about this line between here and here? Just wipe the brush off and then dip it in water, just the tips, tap it, and then just sort of um, blend that out. Just sort of smudge that out. I might want it a little bit darker blue on top. Here's a little ultramarine blue. I'll blend that in. because You always kind of want a little darker on top than on the bottom. So you can play with that, and you'll see that just is sort of this, almost like a whisk, 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 whisk. And there's the brush strokes coming in here like that. Now the rest of this, like down in here in the painting, there was a little bit of um, burnt umber and, oh, I didn't put out the yellow oxide, uh, yellow oxide kind of down here. Um, the original painting was, um, I think he was probably looking at a peach tree, and then the, this was all probably the dirt of the orchard or something right down here. So... Um, but in my particular picture, I didn't talk too much about that. I know that sounds kind of weird. There's a little bit of burnt umber here. I didn't want to talk too much about what was down here in my, my picture. See, I just kind of made it a little darker brown. 
for some contrast against the leaves. Now here's a little bit of yellow oxide, tiny bit of water on the brush, just the tip. Don't dive in like you're some sort of Olympic diver, you know. A little bit of burnt sienna down in here. Kind of go this way. And then the rest of this will just work out. Okay, I've got a little space between here and here. We're going to work out. So at this point, um, that's still wet. So before we can do anything else, we have to dry it, okay? Okay. Anything, but, but anything, any crucial information before we dry it? Anybody need anything critical? Well, we had one that says, have you ever had problems with kids' blue chalk? Have you had issues with the blue kids' chalk? I don't use chalk. I use, um, I use new pastels and uh, in light colors because if you do any kind of blue color chalk it's going to um it's going to it's going to what's going to happen is it's going to dye whatever you've got if you use charcoal it's going to turn everything dark um you know dark it's going to like you mix it with black so basically you know i try to keep the chalk if i'm going to do in chalk i try to keep it kind of in the light grays and light neutrals neutral colors so I'm, if and if i know i'm doing a dark brown chalk i know that that even a brown chalk is going to affect the paint color Okay. One moment, please. Please explain what your height has to do with where the horizon line is. Um, well, your horizon line's eye level. So where are you as the viewer? Where are you saying the viewer is? As a viewer standing on top of a cliff? Um, for instance, an example, box? when we did that painting of, um, in Rio of the Statue of Jesus in Rio, and we were up on that cliff with the photograph, and you could see we were looking down, so the horizon line was obviously down. If we were sitting down on the ground, you know, looking up, it might be higher. The horizon line is wherever you say it is, and then your objects are going to fall in line with that. But usually a photograph will tell you where the horizon line is. It's your cheat sheet. What you want to avoid is horizon lines that are dead in the middle. Now, a painting like this really doesn't have a horizon line in it. It's just almost a, this is, a, this is really a, a, an outdoor still life would be the best way to describe it. Okay? All right. Sounds good to me. All right. If she's drying that off, please remember that we uh, have a website that you can learn more acrylic in-depth lessons at gingercooklive.gallery. Let's just slide that over for you for a second. Uh, there we have lessons, over 300 lessons currently, and adding to them at all the time. So check out the website to learn more. Oh yeah, I'm telling you what, um, even this morning before we um, got the day started, I got it up about 7.30, John was gone a little later, um, and just worked on, on video, um, personal art coaching with people through, through, a, through a technique we call video hacks or PAC, and it's where someone sends me their artwork and then I look at it and you know, you put my piece of my artwork next to it on the computer, we film this, and you, it's like me sitting in your art studio with you telling you ways to improve your painting and why you might want to do it. Hold okay, on a second. So, Hold on a second. Or stop it, something else, too. What, what are we holding on for? Okay, John's going to want to focus again. Let's, let's find something to focus on. Can we do this? <laughs> We've already done it, though. <laughs> it's tedious, okay? which is why we haven't redone it. Huh. 
of that. All right, so you said, all right, so here's our picture. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of look at this. Um, I know that I want my, um, just about an inch over, I want my, my um, tree to start here. Saying, we didn't have your mic turned back on. Hmm? Could what? you just repeat everything you just said? About the labels and everything? Yeah. You turned my mic off and I was telling you about the labels? <laughs> well, John. Uh, you got to love me. I don't. I'm telling oh. you. I'm <laughs> telling you. No, you have to. All right. Okay, I'm I in did. control over here, if you I can see. see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the deal, you guys. These are Avery labels. This is what I was trying to explain to you. And we got a template for these. And this is why, you know, there's usually like three sets of the colors on a page. And if you want a, a, you, the template, that's free. You can just write us at gingercooklive.gallery. And we're happy to send you the template. And then you can go to Amazon. We'll send you the link to that. And you buy a box of those um, Avery labels. They're really address labels. But they're perfect for this. And the reason I said that, and I kept pointing over here, was that sometimes <laughs> when you're mixing colors, after a while, you can't remember where you put what. And this, this is kind of a nice, it's, I think it's helpful. But, you know, and I think it's also helpful, you know, for you guys to, to see what we're doing. Because there's a lot, I mean, even when I was putting out that phthalo blue, which I put twice over here, see that? Even when I put that out, um, you know, I, you know, I could see, you know, sometimes these two colors are pretty close together. You can't always tell the difference. So I hope they look very similar. When they're they're big similar, globs. similar with pickling and big globs. All right, so we're coming over here about a couple of fingers here, inch, and then I want to come up. This is halfway, not quite halfway. I'm going to put a dot here, okay? And then I'm basically going to say that my tree is coming, not straight, kind of bends this way. Has and Ginger ever met uh, Bob Ross? Have I ever met Bob Ross? Yeah. No, I have never met Bob Ross. I, I had never, I have never met Bob, Bob Ross. I, I met Howard Barons, and I've met Wyland, the Hawaiian artist. I've met some art, current artists of the day. I've not met um, Bob Ross. All right, so that's my main, um, that's my main tree trunk. Okay, from from our, from this. And then everything else is kind of going to go around a after that. There's another branch that's coming this way. But we have, in the background here, we're going to have some light green leaves. And let me just show you. This is sort of, the one thing about leaves is once you sort of get them down, you sort of have them down. So the leaf, the leaf shape, you know, kind of, they kind of are curving down like this, okay? You know, kind of, they're, they're a little, they're not totally perfect, right? But they're curving. Everything about his leaves was sort of curving. So the ones down at the top are all going in this direction, okay? And then even if this is the corner of the painting, got one going over here, right? Now, then we came over here. Let's just, let's just do that, okay? So then you've got your, you know, you've got your tree kind of going up this way, okay? And then these ones are coming this way. We have a couple going that way, but mostly going this way. And then as we have some branches coming off here, Again, they're curving back around, and they layer over each other, okay? There's a couple going up, but you see it's kind of looking back this direction, and, um, and then this is all pretty solid. Then I've got some kind of coming this way and that way, and we've got, again, we've got some almost straight down, but not quite straight down, but, um, and then I think there was one going off that direction. But they're basically, the picture pattern is this, okay? And then when you figure out we've got the five peaches over here and the three here, got three here, okay, kind of a one behind this tree, okay? So if you're looking at our p picture pattern, um, could you say it was kind of an A-frame? You could, or you might even say it was an S. Okay, the picture pattern, of so your eyes kind of following around. So. It's kind of a cross between those two. So now that you kind of understand the, the lay of the land here, so to speak, um, what we want is probably a little smaller angle brush. Which one is this? This is probably a 3 8 inch, okay? And um, I'm going to just wet it and wipe it off. Now, to get this light green color, we're going to start with um, yellow. Uh, all right, here's a grayscale. Here, uh, your color wheels all have a grayscale. Uh, that's the cool thing about them. And if your color is going to fall on this side of the grayscale when you mix it, in other words, what we mean by that is if you took a black and white photo of it 
and it would look in one of these shades of gray. This being white, it's going to be one of these shades of gray. And you're mixing any color, I don't care what it is, you're either going to be starting with white or yellow. One of those two. It'll be 99% that color and something else. Now, if it gets over here, like that would be like these dark green colors in here. If it gets over in this side, you wouldn't start with white or yellow. You would start with blue for green and then add yellow to it to lighten it. Okay? So that's, that will save you hours of just mixing time if you understand that far stuff. So I'm going to take a little white and a little yellow, maybe even some yellow oxide, because that's got a little red in it. And I'm going to take, I want a little bit of um, the ultramarine blue in that, just very little. I'm going to mix that together a little bit more. There, I want sort of an olive, light olive green. If I put a tiny bit of magenta in it, and I'm talking about really a small amount, very little, just sort of creep it in, okay? Kind of, get, you know, get more of a red tone to this, maybe a little more yellow in this, a little more magenta. It's really, really a yellow-green color. That's, that's what I would tell you. It's a very yellow-green color. So now, using the angle brush here with the long end away from me, I'm going to just start here like that. I want it a little bit greener. So let's try a tiny bit of phthalo and see what we've got. The ultramarine blue wasn't quite doing it. So here's a little bit of phthalo in that. Okay, a little bit darker. Now we'll see how we did. A little bit more phthalo into this. Just a little bit more. Okay. There we go. Now... Here's our leaves, and you're just using an angle brush like that. These are, this is our background leaves, and we have some darker ones over it. And then the same thing in here. I'm going to just come down here and indicate. I want a little bit more thalo blue with that in yellow. A little bit brighter down here. I'm going to just come down here like this and suggest that there's some leaves, kind of where I have this blue area doing this. And this is our lighter green ones kind of underneath, just like that, okay? So it doesn't seem like much, but that's, you know, that's kind of where, we, where we're at here, a little bit more of this. Maybe I've got one coming this way. These are the ones, this is, this, he had the lighter color colors underneath and the darker colors on top. Kind of, all right, so now I'm going to come over here and just do, um, I don't need much of this, but next to our tree trunk, which is going to be, um, dark we've got a light color let's put a tiny bit of magenta in that just a littlest bit okay i want it kind of a little bit more gray greened in there like this and uh, i'm going to suggest that there's some leaves coming this way out here like that next to where this tree trunk is okay so you're going okay so so then what happens over here well for the most part what happens over here is Oh, we'll start with ultramarine blue now. Stay out of that pile. And a little phthalo and a little yellow oxide. And I'm going to make a very dark green and I'm going to add some brown to it. <coughs> okay? That would hey, be like burnt thank umber. Eric for the donation. He makes a comment. John, yeah? take Mama G out for ice cream after the show. On my way to the ER. Have been sick for a couple of days, but I'm watching, listening while I'm on my way. Oh my gosh, you're on your way to the ER? Thank you very much. Who am I talking to? Who was that? That was Eric. Oh, Eric. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry you're not feeling well. Gosh, that's terrible. Thank you very much. We'll take you up on the ice cream. Thank you, Eric. We appreciate it very much. <laughs> ice I cream feel better. Like. Gosh. Um, wow, we're so sorry. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take some dark in here like that. And maybe a dark leaf coming down here like that. Let's just pull one here. See how I'm overlapping them? Okay, and then over in this area, we're going to kind of, kind of willy-nilly, we're going to make this all pretty dark. Okay, let's get this a little darker still. This is our dark green. Hey, we, we even have Andrew in the house. Hi, Andrew. Uh, this is on well, Sunday. You know, it, he, uh, even Andrew's got to take some time off eventually, right? Andrew works all the time. He's always flying around doing this and that. In case you guys are wondering, Andrew, Andrew um, lives in Haiti. Now, you just got to imagine the people that are watching us around the world. Eric lives in Las Vegas. And, um, so uh, it's early in the morning in for him. It's like we two hours. hours. Who, who's, we got some people from New Zealand. New Zealand, England. Yeah. 
London area, I guess. Okay. Ireland, I think. Ireland, yeah. So um, I'm going to start just suggesting some, just by the here, just suggesting a few, um, just a few dark colors here without actually having to do the leaves yet. Does that make sense? We're just just by the brush strokes. That's all we're doing, you guys. Just by the brush strokes, suggesting something, and. A lot of times when you're breaking down a pattern, you just, it's like the chicken or the egg. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Here I want a little little leaf here maybe that's doing that, okay? And um, I like this one. Okay, there, all right. Now I'm going to rinse my brush because the paint was starting to dry in it. And um, uh, I think I would be fairly safe to put in this tree which will be kind of, we'll start with a, a burnt umber and a little bit of burnt sienna, kind of mix those two together. And I'm going to put in this branch. And I feel fairly safe not having to dry this yet because um, this is, you always, I always start with my darkest color when I'm doing a tree. And a little burnt umber, even some ultramarine blue, will make a really, really dark um, side on the right side of the tree branch. It's going to get a little narrower as it goes up. Now, if I want a tree branch that's going over here, I'm using just the angle brush. It's always wider at the shoulder, and then as we're coming this way, maybe I'll just look, kind of weave it in here like that and uh, make it a little bit lo wider there, okay, like that. Shoot that coverage more Do what? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's just kind of one of the, you know, so I'm just sitting there saying, what can I, you know, I always like to see what can I do before I have to dry something. Does that make sense? What can I do before I have to dry something? So I'm going to leave that alone. Now, while this is still wet, okay, this green's still wet, I'm going to take some of that light green we made and let's, let's, let's mix it again because this kind of, we kind of used it all up, some yellow oxide. We'll grab some of this green, put in there. And a little bit of, let's try cad red medium and see if we can't tone that green down. A little bit of thalo, a little bit of cad red medium. I want really an olive green, no question about it. Nice olive green. can be a little bit brighter than that other stuff, but still has to be very olive. Okay, a little bit more thalo. There we go, that's sort of a warmer green. Hey, we've warmer got Mexico green. here too, Ontario. Um, wow. Denmark. Denmark, wow. Denmark. The name of that palette will be coming up shortly. All right, then somebody said, what is the name of this palette? The reason we, we use gray is because it's easier for you to see the colors. If we used a white palette, you wouldn't really see the white anymore. Um, this, is, this is a Jack Richardson uh, uh, palette here by Jack Richardson. What's kind of neat about it, it has a, its own color wheel kind of and some stuff on it. You know, it's kind of nice. And you have a grayscale, it comes with a grayscale. And you could just, when you're all done, you might just want to cut that out and just tape it somewhere. That's a nice big grayscale, isn't it? I should note to self, do that. Um, anyway, these are called Jack Richardson. I think Jerry also makes one that is a Soho, that makes a gray one. These are very nice. It's 9 by 12. It's a good size. Um, it'll fit in a, here's something you may not know. A, a, a palette that's around 9 by 12 will fit into a, um, a brownie pan with a plastic lid so that you can kind of burp the lid, put your palette in there, and maybe a wet sponge. It might stay, keep your paint longer. Hmm. All right, so now I want to suggest that there's some leaves in the background here, back in here like this while this is still wet. So I'm going to just um, kind of just do just a little bit of this, of these leaves here. Just something like that, just kind of pull them. Because I'm going to put some dark over them, but I want to just suggest that there might be some of these in here like that. Okay. Now that, um, and then where are we here? We think we're pretty good here. Okay, so ne what's next? What's next is we have to dry it. At some point we do have to dry it. That's a really simple painting. Once you, once you see the pattern, this is what you're always looking for when you're doing a pattern. It's a pattern. It's kind of a math thing. Look for the pattern. Look for the direction of the leaves. Look what's behind what. What's kind of out of focus. Like, for instance, something like this. I could take a little water on a brush, right, like this. And um, if I tap this out, just kind of brush that out. See what I'm doing? Kind of even push those more into the background so they're there. Um, these dried enough where I can do that. 
And I mean, if this was real wet, it wouldn't be as effective. But see how I kind of just sort of shoved those into the background and we'll put other ones on top. And that was just with the soft brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna dry it. Okay, she's drying that off. It seems like we're having a little bit of problem with some people with sound. Uh, Sharon, I would quit the application and start it up again. I don't know what the deal would be. I too, mine was on the wrong network, so I was going in and out. So I have to refresh mine and try to come back to the show. Yeah, our thunderstorm is still raging here. Okay, you guys may remember that in the last time we did a live show, um, I, I, I did this as a, um, a, a giveaway, one of our 10-minute videos. We're also, you know, it was last week. So this those week... Those of you that won that, they have not gone out yet, as you can plainly see, that's in her hand. It hasn't gone out yet. And the reason it hasn't gone out yet, it will go out. We're all going to mail it to our winner. But... Um, this was really based loosely off a Van Gogh, which is here, which I just filmed this week. And this will be the lesson for our in our video lesson library for our Academy members this week. So if you just wanted to do this painting and, you know, find out about that sponge technique and actually do it, this was like a very simple, you know, um, kind of interpretation of that. This is more detailed. Um, from Vincent Van Gogh. If you want to do that, you can join our academy just for a week and have access to all over 300 lessons for just uh, $9.95. If you just want to try and paint that, you might like it. So that's what, that's some of the stuff that we've been up to. All right, so back to here. All right, so the light's coming from this direction, you guys. And we might just take a moment and decide where our, pe we've got a peach up here that's hiding behind this tree here like this got a peach and then I've got a peach here that's a little bigger and my biggest one's going to be right here but I I guess I can still put it here's my biggest one that's going to be right there it's, it isn't supposed to technically touch that other one I don't think it touches this one let's move this one up a little bit this is why we use chalk because you can erase it and then we've got I'm going to have some branches coming this way and we've got peaches here but we haven't done the rest of that stuff yet so we're seeing want the smaller of these brushes. Where's that one? Yeah, kind of a 3 8 inch. All right, so what I want to do is take that light green color with a little bit of white and a little tiny bit of magenta, okay? And maybe some cad red medium. Let's see what that, the cad red will really tone it down. Okay, so there's this sort of moss green color. And I, notice I pinched the brush, and I'm going to start here at the edge of my uh, tr uh, tree branch, maybe even make it a little wider, and I'm going to say here's the light uh, highlight on this tree branch. Now if you were to go, if you go to Wikipedia and, um, um, you know, Google this and, and actually print out his painting, his tree branch is going to be a little more detailed than I'm doing it in this small picture. I mean, he's got a few more colors on it. He's got some burnt sienna in it like this, and he's you know, he's, he's played a little bit more with it that we're doing. Well, we did that, see, like that. I think he had a knot hole or something. We're not getting all crazy, but, he, you know, he did have all that, okay? So now I know I've got that. Now, um... Has Ginger but, ever done a painting that she will never sell? Yeah, a bunch of them. Yep. A bunch of them. We have a bunch of paintings we've never sold. You know, I, you know, I did that painting of John. I did those, the, my books... My book paintings, those are not for sale. We've got some good ones, though we have a new auction coming up that uh, we've got some really nice ones for sale. Um, yeah, auction, hopefully we'll be starting up in a few days. So here's our, um, I want to just put a tree branch this way, coming this way. And I've got one kind of coming up like this that goes up like that. Kind Look of at the edge up. you can get on that ruby satin silver. I'm telling you what, and you know, George, John and I um, um, ordered a whole new group of these brushes. We buy them just like you do. Um, well, we probably buy more than you do. Well, we buy a lot more <laughs> than you do, but we buy them the same way you do. And we bought, bought a whole new set of these. Um, j just We ordered them last week, and they came just in a few days. I was, I was really impressed with how fast they came. We get those at thebrushguys.com. And if you use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word, 
you get a 5% discount. And the reason we like them, and I say this all the time, but there's really, I mean, I absolutely mean it with total sincerity. The reason we love them is because they, they while some other online stores like Jerry's will have, the, you know, ha have these brushes on sale and they'll be a good price, they have a good prices all year long and they do shipping all over the world where Jerry's won't ship out of the country and um, or they're presently not doing it as of the time of this recording that I'm aware of, but they have international uh, shipping. And so if you live somewhere, here's a little orange on top of that. If you live, you know, in Europe or Australia or, or wherever you live, um, Canada, they will ship there. And I think my friends, the last time, uh, last year, I think um, Sylvia got her brushes. She had a whole bunch of them. And I think the shipping, she said, was about $25 to ship to Australia. And what was interesting was is that when she went to price these brushes in the brush store, these ruby satin silver brushes in her art store, what she discovered was that, that they were um, m much more expensive, that it was less expensive for her to buy them from the States and pay the international shipping than it was for her to get them from them. I don't know. I thought that was interesting. Don't you think that's interesting? Yeah, it is interesting. Here's this brush. This is a little... All right, here's the... going to lighten up the skin, lighten up this edge again. See what I'm doing? Acrylic's dry darker, so I'm just kind of lightening up. See how we're sort of pulling in these branches? So, um, I mean, this is kind of cool, right? And you've got this background-looking stuff. Now, I'm gonna, you see me wipe the brush all the time. I want to just come up here like this if I'm happy with the, this uh, placement of this uh, peach. And what's the story with Ginger moving to Colorado? You didn't tell me this one. I'm not moving to Colorado. There's not a cruise port near that. No, nope, not moving to Colorado. <laughs> I think in one of my videos, um, um, I mentioned that I had wanted to do a vacation in Colorado, and my agent at the time had explained to me I couldn't move to Colorado um, because there were um, aliens there. And I said, do you mean like people from other countries that are <laughs> undocumented? She says, no, like, um, like outer space aliens. That they're all over Colorado. You didn't know that. And I said, I had no idea. She says, no, you can't move. You can't go there. <laughs> you got to love it. You got to love it, don't you? And, and, but the sad thing is that she absolutely believed this. I mean, she really, I mean, she wasn't making this up. She really thought it was true. So that, that to me was, um, you know, part of the, because, I mean, you know, when you have somebody that really thinks that stuff, and, you know, she seemed like a pretty sane person, could drive a car, sell artwork. She was good at selling artwork. Um, so you don't, you know, you want to kill the goose that's laying the golden eggs for you. But on the other hand, my God, what a crazy goose that was, right? <laughs> I just, she explained to me, she was living in Florida one time, and she said that they had, uh, had to move in the middle of the night. They had to just up and move. And I said, well, why did you have to move? And she said, well, she says the aliens had come in and found them and slimed their house. Slimed their house? Yeah. That and sounds I like said, Nickelodeon. Well, you mean, like, you mean like, um, like slug slime, you know, sliming your house? She goes, yeah. She said it was terrible. And I said, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't understand. I said, um, aren't you insured for something like that? I mean, that's insurance. <laughs> I mean, that's vandalism. I don't think that... The insurance company cares who the vandals are, do they? That's vandalism, man. I, I would have put in a claim for that. They wouldn't have gotten me to move. Oh, no, I had to move. But, you know, I used to just take whatever she said and just go with it. It was really fun. She, her name was Akadriana, and everybody on her planet was named Aka something. And she was a walk-in. And if you want to know what a walk-in was, there used to be somebody living in that body named Maury. And when Maury moved out in 1990, and Akadriana moved in, How's that? Uh, you do oh. have interesting friends. I know, don't I? I'm going to make this one a little smaller here. These peaches are a little smaller. I have one over here, kind of hiding over here. This is pretty much where I've decided these are going to go today. So, yeah, no, no. It was... Um, yeah, no, no? It was... Uh, no, she was just... Um, she was, she was really fun to talk to because she had all these weird ideas. And then she had these dogs. I think at one point she had a... They, and they always got, like, people food. Of course, your dog did, too. So I guess we can't say that was too strange. But she got people... Their dog... Her dogs... These dogs got people food. And she was, she was worried about them because apparently the aliens 
there were a lot of different groups of aliens that you had to ask her, but there was a particular group of aliens that were using mind control on the dogs. And I'm going, mm -hmm. really? Oh, yeah, they're using mind control on the dogs. And I'm going, and she said, yeah, I'm just, she says, I'm just so worried about my dogs. And I'm going, yeah, because they're probably totally out of control and she can't get them to do anything. I didn't want to say that because that, you know, no sense in picking a fight. Because if you ever challenged her too much on this stuff, she got very defensive really quick. <laughs> and um, so I remember saying, well, this is great. She says, what do you mean it's great? I'm going, well, we can make some money on that. Find out how they're doing it. Do you know any of these aliens? Because if we can, we can do some mind control on the dogs. We might get it on some horses. We could win some races. We could, we could capitalize on that. That, that's worth some serious money. Find out how they're doing that. Why are we fooling around with this painting business? Let's start mind controlling the dogs. You know, I'm telling you what, this is painting business for the birds. Let's, <laughs> let's do that. So, anyway, it was, we had some great, um, we had some great times. She was my agent for a number of years. I can remember her telling me, she says, I can't sell pink. Stop with the pink. I can't sell pink. And then my other favorite thing that she would do was she would say things like, um, do, it, do that real pretty blue, the one you did last week. Do the real pretty one. I said, what, all the other blues are just crummy? I only had one pretty blue? I said, you know, and she, <laughs> she goes, well, you know the one I'm, no, I don't know the one. You, I was doing, I was cranking out for her huge paintings. 36 by 48, 30 by 40, 48 by 60, at least four a week. And taking them off the stretcher bars, rolling them up and shipping them all over the world. And, and for her at one time, if you want to know why I'm fast, I'm fast. I'll tell you, that was, a, that was a lesson in being fast. You had to be fast to get it all out. You had to be fast to get it all out. Absolutely right. You had to be fast to get it all out. Okay, so I guess we'll put one there. Okay, make this one a little bigger. Overall, was she a good agent? She was a good agent. She sold my artwork, and this is why we put up with all the weirdness. And my friends all thought she was f fun to talk to because she really had all these strange um, ideas about, you know, and she also, she, and she had the gal gallery owners bamboozled too. She, besides, uh, besides selling them artwork, she'd go in and she'd do some sort of a cleansing of their gallery for about 500 bucks. <laughs> Get all the evil spirits out of their gallery too. That was her other trick. <laughs> well, you know, you know, and I mean, you know, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong, and you know, so that she would do that. Um, she hasn't died. I don't, she's still around somewhere, selling stuff, doing things. So, all right, I got this one a little big, but I will make it smaller as I paint it. But you know, basically, I've got the white on here now. Okay, so then, um, so then I can keep going with some of these other branches. I've got another little branch I want to bring out here, like this. We were like being that. attacked by the trolls today, and I gotta say, Mona is a quick shot today. Trolls? Why would anybody want to do that? I just can't imagine. What? What do and people I don't know why get they don't out have of it? Better to do on a Sunday afternoon. What do they get out of it? I mean, it just it just seems like su such a a waste of time. Yes. Okay. Seems really kind of rude and mean and mean spirited and you know. All right, I'm gonna dry this. All right, and then we'll keep going. Maybe that was fun. The tales of my art agent who sold my paintings everywhere. Oh, and the reason why I signed my name Cook and not Ginger Cook was um, uh, even G. Cook. Hey, why didn't you do G. Cook? Well, the, the thing is, she, she wanted it, I wanted to do G. Cook. She wanted it Cook. Uh, and she, you know, and both of us came to the conclusion that you're, um, if you don't, if you, there's no gender attached and there's a pre natural prejudice against female artists. So if it's like, you know, Nancy Lou painted this. Nancy, you know, so well, it's, who, who's that? But Cook, you know, Cook is just could be anybody. In fact, there was. I'll tell you a story after I dry this. Ooh, a really a good cliffhanger. story. Cliffhanger <laughs> after I dry this. All right. As we mentioned earlier, we do have an auction coming up. Let me pop up here real quick our website. Uh, I don't think I want to do that. I have to turn off too many things. So, gingercookauction.com is where you'll find the auctions when they start up later in the week. Did you, are we going to have any puzzles in the auction, John? I believe I found some more puzzles. Did we'll you have, have a puzzle. puzzle I can show because I want to talk this puzzle, oh, you this, talk this, about story. The puzzle story? this I want to, I have a puzzle story to tell you that has to do with the word, word cook. So, um, 
All right, those are dry enough where we can keep going with the rest of this, right? You guys, okay? So anyway, I mean, I thought that was, you know, you know, uh, she, she was, um, you know, she sold my artwork and she, you know, the thing for me was it was really interesting. She FedEx, she would FedEx, she was very good about paying. You know, one of the things about art galleries and agents is a lot of times you just get the shaft that you don't get paid. Everybody's had a few experiences with that. In fact, I have a rule kind of about galleries that I don't believe in ever putting artwork in a brand new gallery. If they, if they, they've got to have some kind of track record. Or I don't want to, I'm not interested, okay? But um, because they can just disappear in the middle of the night with all your artwork, and that is not fun. Because they okay? physically have your artwork. They physically have your artwork, okay? So that being said, I've got a little, um, um, I'm going to go ahead and keep making greens. Oh, yeah, I was going to tell you that story first. All right, I can do that. So you see this neat puzzle, see, cook with a slash? This is one of the puzzles that uh, were sold all over the world uh, some years ago, back around... Um, 2000, I guess, or about 2004, maybe, is when these got sold. And I have a few samples left, and this is the, some of the things we're putting in our auction. And, um, you know, they even got sold in Tal Target and Walmart and uh, some of my, you know, anyway, enough of that. So there was a lady, apparently, who wrote me, uh, who's one of our viewers, that actually, back in the day, she bought one of these puzzles. And she said she, her budget was very limited. She took her time. She put it together and then glued it and hung it up on the wall. And she would look at it, and she thought this guy by the name of Cook was, um, you know, she loved it. She was very inspired by the, by the art and wanted to paint someday. And then lo and behold, she gets on YouTube and discovers that Cook is a female. She was very excited about that. And that she wrote and told me how much that painting had helped her through the rough times. So you just never know the effect your artwork has on somebody else. I thought that was kind of a neat story. It is kind of, isn't it? Yes. Yes and yes. Okay, so... Um, let's see, what, where am I going with this? Oh, yeah, I'm going to take a little white and yellow, okay, like that. And we're just going to now c cover the peaches with this sort of yellow. And I had a little tiny bit of orange on my brush, so it's sort of a um, soft kind of orange peach yellow with white in it, okay? And we're going to paint that first. And, and the reason we're doing this like this is that um, yellow only paints well over white, okay? So all the peaches get painted like this first, okay? They all get painted like this first. Here's this one. I'm going to rinse the brush again and start with this. Okay, so anyway, so back to, um, see, what were we talking about with the, um, all right, so this can be drying while we're doing a dark green. So here we go. Here's some yellow. Ultramarine phthalo blue, little burnt umber. We want we want back into our dark greens again. Okay. Hey, now we that we've thank done Melanie for the donation that came in through the PayPal system. <gasps> really appreciate thank that. Thank you very much. Thank you very very much, Melanie. That is so kind. We really appreciate. It. John and I are most appreciative of that. I want a little bit darker green than that, so I'll put a little more blue in it. I want some darker greens back here. And some darker. See how I'm kind of coming under here now and adding some darker ones. Hey, you notice the new video I gave you guys right next to the left of me. That is what Ginger sees on her camera, on her monitor in front of her. So you kind of see the setup she's working with. So I can I can look up and see what I'm painting. I'm not just doing this blind here, okay? It's like she's being able to step back from it. Yeah, you, you need, I used to, back, back when I had it in stu Studio, uh, you, we always talk about Studio A and B. Studio uh, A has got, um, which is one of our rooms in the house, has got, um, uh, is right next to the stairs, and I used to be in a different room, and I would need to back out of the studio, practically fall down the stairs trying to see stuff. Okay, I mean, it was really kind of funny. Okay, so we'll put some more here like that. It would have been funny if you fell down the stairs. Well, no, it wouldn't have been funny. But I'm just saying that this is such a nice setup to have the, the camera on here like that. I can't tell you how nice that is, all right? So here we go. And then remember I said I was going to make this peach just a bit smaller here. Okay. So. Yeah, currently their auction has no products on it yet. We're going to shoot for the 15th to start getting some up. I got to get them all photographed and put on the website. And uh, we want to thank everybody that uh, participated in last month's auction. That we just um, we we were start, we were trying that we had Daniel's painting up. Daniel Elliott, one of our guest artists. Well, speaking of that, we're supposed to start a new one for uh, August first. 
Oh, we, we're, we're not going to do that now. We've got just this one. Because we've got the big one going. Because we've got the big one going, so we're not going to do that. But Daniel, um, here's some lighter green now. See what we're doing here? Like that, we're starting to add. Just by adding more yellow and white to this, starting to add a couple lighter ones. Starting to put the um, lighter colors on. Just sort of kind of an intermix mi mixing of light and dark colors. And these angle brushes are absolutely perfect for that because they allow for um, control. Total, total control, particularly for leaves. My gosh, they're just great for that, all right? To yeah. make a donation through the PayPal system, if you go to gingercooklive.gallery, on the right, towards the top, you'll see a donate to our scholarship fund button. And incidentally, last month we scholarshiped uh, four people, by the way. Mm, four, yeah, and we've already done three this month. Yeah. Well, we've done three this month. Um, Some people that really needed a good helping hand and made their and we do, And we're able to do that through your, when you donate to our scholarship fund, then we're able to scholarship somebody else too. That's how that kind of works. Yep. So we appreciate that very much. And... Um, I got it. I got it. I started to tell you about our personal art coaching. We've got space again in the personal art coaching, and the reason we do is that summertime we have what we call our summertime and wintertime students. It's really funny. August is a month where people either decide they don't have time to paint anymore, or they do have time. So we we do like a it's switching. We do like a yeah. The switching. people that are busy for the summer they drop us. Then you have those that are going back to school they drop. Then you have those that say, "Well, summer's over. The kids are going back to school. Now I have time." So we have a, a changing of the guards, as it were. Yeah, that were. So there is there is spots open uh, for personal art coaching, and I have to. Okay, so it's just kind of. I think that's kind of cool. I mean, just going as long as I'm in Jane that. Jane would light like green. to know where is the light source on this particular painting? It's coming from this way. Which way? See that? Can't you see the light on the trunk? Oh, right there on the left. Yeah. So it's coming from the left. Coming from the left. See, it's coming from that way. So, I mean, I'm just kind of, and it's kind of maybe from the top, too. So you're just, there's sort of a, it's almost it backlit. Like the it sounds like it'd be about an 11 o'clock or 10.30. It's, it's like almost like back, backlit. Almost. I would say it would, almost, would be almost backlit for you. So here's some of my dark brown again. I'm, I'm kind of I'm dark green again. I'm kind of, uh, you, you know, going in between the, the dark colors, you see, and then the, there you go. So just keep I keep putting in, you know, some leaves and defining stuff, and um, some of these leaves, of course, will go across the peaches, but we can't quite do that yet. But we, we just can. painted the peaches. So we're gonna. There we go. Just something. Hey, down don't here. you have a uh, birthday cruise coming up? You know what? This is a great time to talk about the birthday cruise. Uh, the reason we're talking about, though my birthday isn't until February of next year, the reason we're talking about our <laughs> It'll birthday It'll be here cruise, before you know it. Well, it always seems like that, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, who's counting? Anyway, so what, what that is is that we thought out of Houston, Texas, Royal Caribbean is going to have a, a seven-day cruise. And, um, if you, and we've got a travel agent who's arranging for a group of us to be able to all go together. Um, Party on. And it, we've got about... Um, about three spots left, I think, if that. Yeah. I don't know. As of Friday, we had some. But anyway, what what that means is is that you can. Um, the the we were guaranteed so many seats, not of people, that you know the cruise line held out so many cabins for us. Okay. Yeah. At a, at a good price, and this comes with a um, apparently because it's a group of us. Apparently, we're supposed to get a. Um, a room, this is what they said. We're supposed to get a room. Here, I'm lightening this up again. You guys see more yellow to the leaves now. We're doing some lighter ones. Uh, we're supposed to get some sort of uh, 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 room and um, where we can kind of do a, a little room. painting, like a meeting room, and there's supposed to be an open bar cocktail party. And um, I say that's supposed to be, um, you know, that's what they said. And um, but anyway, in order to participate, and we all well, the dining will have a certain section of the dining room. We won't all sit at one table, obviously, with forty people. But we'll, um, but we'll all be in one section of the dining room, and you, you know. But it'll still be an independent cruise. We're not. It's not a workshop because John and I are not. We're just. We just said we would get together and figure out how y'all could do it. But 
We're like, we're not charging extra, you know, for some sort of painting workshop. That's not it, though. I'm going to bring my paints and do some demonstrations, and I'll paint, and you can bring your paints, too. Well, I'll see how it goes. But just wanted to, I wanted to make that clear, so I didn't want people to feel like they were misled. Well, I thought it was going to be a workshop. No, we never, no, but it is going to be a kind of a nifty cruise, I think. All right, so the, my, my peaches now, I'm bringing this up with the peaches because um, even like with this painting with the apples, do you see how there's a, you know, you know, there's always a dark and a light side to fruit and circles and let's see, where's that uh, one, one thing? Up you, underneath your gladiolus. Under here? Isn't it? No. You're looking for the ball? Yeah. That's where I put it. Well, I get up and turn that gladiola. Then what, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, so talk to me about where you think that might be. Well, you moved it. That's where I put it. I don't ball. remember moving it. I have no memory of moving it. Oh, here it is. I see it now. Yeah, All right. I moved so it. we have something called Back to Basics on our website and even a couple of these on YouTube. And this is, you need to be able to. You know, you know, paint like something like a ball where it's darker on one side and lighter on the other. You know, sometimes it's, it has to do with blending. Other times it's just some fast bits of light. It doesn't all have to be perfectly blended. But do understand that this is how something, you know, you've got a light source and so the bottom part is going to be dark. So the same thing with our peaches. The, this side is uh, going to be a little darker. So taking a little magenta and cad red medium, right? Who's, yeah. who's the original artist on this painting? Whit, Whit, Whitridge. Whitridge. Whitridge? Whitridge. Uh, William Thomas Whitridge. Okay. Now and this is Whitmore. Whitmore. Whitridge. Not Whitmore. Whit, Whitridge. Whitridge. All okay. Right. So here's our, um, this is the dark side of the peaches. Okay. And it's not completely covered. It's just there's, if you look at how he painted it, I mean, this dark side here obviously is, but um, and you can kind of look at, you know, I, I suggest you just go up and, you know, Google this picture um, and see it. Because what we're talking about is, you know, the right side of the peach and, you know, even some of this is um, uh, going to be dar you know, the, it's darker than the other side, okay? And that's just basically what we're talking about. You might have a little bit of dark here. We're going to say... This one's in kind of, we're going to have a leaf over this, so this one's in shadow, making this a little darker, and that one's going to be a little, just a little bit lighter here and darker here. Okay, so there we go. So already we've kind of got something going there. I'm going to put a little yellow closer to this because we'll just kind of focus in on these peaches, which is, kind of, I think, kind of fun. And now the one peach is the only one he really had a lot of detail on. That's our star peach here. And that one's the one that kind of came here like this and did like a half moon circle with a light color, almost not quite white, but almost like this. Okay, came around like that. And then, and that's your sort of peachy, orangey, uh, you know, peach color is yellow, uh, white, and orange. That's sort of your peach color. And magenta more so because that's even a warmer color. So we're going to say that right here like this next to that, light we're saying that's the lightest part of the peach then I'll put a little bit of white with that mix this color and this side here is uh, going to be lighter than that and there was a little dark area right next to this if you're interested in the birthday cruise use the contact us form on your ginger cook live dot gallery it does leave out of Galveston, Texas, on the Liberty of the Seas, which is Royal Caribbean. Yeah, it's a Royal That's the only cruise line we use at the moment. So, um, yeah, this is when you want a little bit lighter yellow here on this edge, and maybe a little bit underneath here like that. So sometimes you have to dry it. This is one of these ones. I think I had to dry it a lot to, um, to get all these colors, okay? I had to really just take a minute and dry it because you're talking about um, almost just little whimsical brush strokes to make it look like peaches. I mean, it's really, it's not, um, I suppose if you were doing this larger, now please don't do this 16 by 20. This is never meant to be 16 by 20, okay? If you're going to do this 16 by 20, then you better Google his and get more detail. That's what I'm going to tell you. All right, so here's a little bit of light here on the um, tree again. See how I'm just layering the light? because that tree trunk is, is really important. And I want to, 
What just What did you do this time? I don't know. Whatever fell over. What fell over? I have no idea. There. Probably something important. Well, it couldn't be that important. Okay. So here, I'm going to say that there's a branch that started here. Came over here like that. See where I've just put that one in now? It's crossing over the top of this. Okay. And then I'm going to put some little branches up this way. All right, so far so good. Now I'm still working on the peaches, but I'm just, you know, here's a little darker brown here. So anyway, back to back in the day when Acadriana was selling all my artwork, um, my friends used to come over and just, because they loved to listen to her tell about what life was like on her planet. It was really fun. A little something different, you know. It, it, the, it seemed to upset the guys in the room. They all just had to get up and leave. They couldn't, they couldn't be in the same room and keep a straight face. Nobody wanted to be rude because she really was a good agent selling my artwork. She did a really good job selling it. And uh, she knew art, and I learned a lot about art and what sells and you know how to, how to sell things. Because uh, if you're serious about wanting to sell your artwork, you know, and, you know, and you really do want to... Um, uh, you know, be successful at it and, and, and sell it, um, at some point you're, you're going to have to, you know, find a gallery, an art gallery that takes your stuff and, you know, and you have to have a look that's, you know, it not, you should know a little bit about the art gallery because um, do they have an artist that's already just like you, so why, why do they want you? Uh, but are they so different that your stuff... You know, if all, they're, if all they're selling is anime, then they probably don't want a bunch of old dead artists in there. Do you see what I mean? You have to be at least somewhat congruent with the gallery you want to be in, okay? And uh, how long have they been in business? Who are the other artists? Is this one of these galleries, what they call a vanity gallery? So do you guys know what a vanity gallery is? A vanity gallery is a gallery that... Um, um, sometimes they call a vanity gallery is one that's done by the, the artist. Okay, I'm going to make this a little smaller here, a little darker. It's one by the artist. And the artist um, um, starts their own gallery, and oftentimes they're referred to as vanity galleries. Uh, but if it's, a, if it's an artist that owns it, um, whose paintings are going to get sold first? If the gallery, you know, I, you know you, I, and I've been in that situation where, of course, they, they're happy to sell yours as long as they've sold theirs first, okay? If the person doesn't want to buy it, rather than and they still want to paint the light bill, they might turn around and talk about your painting. Um, so then now the new way to sell it is on Etsy or, or um, uh, YouTube, right? Um, that, uh, maybe not YouTube, but see Facebook or Etsy or um, Pinterest. Our Pinterest is another good way to, to you know to sell something. It's a little peach color. Hey, we'd like to thank Arthur for the donation through the PayPal system. He understood my instructions. Thank you, Arthur. Hey, thank you, thank you very much, Arthur. That's really very nice. And the reason we do the the reason we've asked if you guys want to do that, you know, we appreciate it very much. And even if one, you can do it even when we're not live. A lot of times, the only way to donate something is if we're we're on a live show, right? But um, that's the only way you can do it through the you, YouTube through system. Through the YouTube, it's only if we're doing live. But um, the PayPal system uh, only takes three percent of the funds that you donate, and um, YouTube takes what? Thirty. Thirty. So three and zero. we still appreciate it, but uh, it, they do take a bit more. So our PayPal is a little bit kinder to the budget. Okay. See, I'm starting to you know everything gets layered. You see, I just keep playing with the peaches till they're until they're layered. Let me just get this out of the way, right? And uh, I'm going to just get a little bit darker back here. Probably is a good time. I might even go smaller on this brush. I think I have a smaller brush, and this is where I would use a smaller angle brush right here. This is the quarter inch, because this is a pretty small little painting to be uh, doing this with. So we'll just start, you know, working on that a little bit. Um, Anyway, so back to when you want you want to sell some artwork, okay? And um, 
and we want you to. And when somebody says, well, can I sell it? If I'm, look, we'd like some credit. If you pick one of my designs, we, we'd like some credit for it. You know, if you could do that, that would be kind. But when you're talking about, um, uh, you know, selling up on Facebook or Etsy or someplace like that, and you can, you can sell something, I think that's great because that, that will help you in the long run as an artist recover, even if you just recover some funds every once in a while. There's a little bit of red on that um, branch. Okay, so that kind of shows up a little bit more. So now we're starting to pull a little more stuff in here. So a little branch coming out of here. That's what these little um, brushes are so w wonderful for. Now, uh, let's see, let's get this a little darker here, a little bit of me, purple. Okay, and I want this to come this way and then that also, way. Also, if you'd like to send a donation in that's not going through a credit card system, you can mail them to our snail mail address, which is on our Contact Us form page of the website, gingercooklive.gallery. Just go to Contact Us, and you can see the snail mail. Yeah. Which people still use occasionally. Yeah, they still do. It's, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? Let's see, I think I'm out of yellow. Um, There's a surprise. I know, for some reason I go through more yellow with this brand of paint. That's the one thing I would tell people, buy yellow. Here's a little bit of yellow coming up in here. It's kind of a yellow-green color. It's not quite yellow on these peaches. It's sort of a cross between a... And then it's hard to tell, you know, when you're painting something... Um, you know, the, the, when things are this old, it's hard, to, it's hard to know what they were like originally because we don't really, you know, um, you can't take flashes in museums. That some of these paintings are just um, um, maybe, um, you know, they're so old that who knows how old the picture is and the technology it was used to film it. So try to get the values as opposed to the exact colors, I would say. Now, what I want to do here is... Um, just to take some dark green and just make this peach a little smaller here, like that. Kind of back behind here like that, kind of make that one smaller. And um, I'm going to just do a little trick here with the, with, the, with the sky color. Here's a little blue and white. That was the ultramarine blue color, as you guys remember, right? So I'm going to come up here. One thing you can do... So, see, that dried up, so let's move the blue up here where I can use it. Um, when, you're try when you're doing something with leaves, if you're having trouble with the shape of a leaf or something, leaf, if, you, if you know your, um, if you absolutely, you know, you're very congruent on your uh, sky color, okay? Remember how you mixed it, okay? So that, you know, you've got the same color. You can come up right next to something, and, you know, you can tr trim it off. You can reshape a leaf. You can uh, reshape a, 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 a peach. You can come up here, like I wanted uh, next to this peach, I wanted a little light blue. I think I want it even whiter than that. So notice I'm gonna, the blue's already on my brush, so I wiped it off, and now I just add a bit of white to the brush. And this is called mixing color right on the canvas, which you can do too, right? So if you're having trouble just, you know, getting just the right, uh, maybe the branch isn't thin enough, you didn't get a thin branch, just if you re write down how you did your sky color, okay? So then you can come back in and um, maybe uh, trim up a, a leaf. Um, one thing I wanted to do here, I'm going to put a tiny bit of yellow with it and white, uh, a little bit of that yellow oxide color, I think, and white, is I want to indicate that it's summer. I notice in his painting that there's almost this white-yellow color it's really white, but it's got the slightest tint of yellow to it. So let's see, I want that color. So I'm coming up here with uh, in the sky like this and kind of brightening up the sky around here. A little bit like that, a little bit more blue here. And of course, mixing white would have been good here too, but I'm just saying that this is, uh, you needed to like, like just redefine something, okay? See how we're just sort of saying, and, and almost like a cloudy day. Um, there's little, some white clouds in the sky, whatever. So this is uh, one of the things that you can do after, you know what I mean, as you're, as you're painting along. So don't panic if you didn't get a good leaf. Let's just come back up here 
to this sky color up here. Suppose that one of these leaves wasn't as wonderful as you thought it should be. Is that a good way to say that? Then come back with a little sky color and change it. Because a painting like this will allow you to do it. You know, absolutely. And I want to bring down some leaves a little lower, which I will do. But, I mean, this, and if you need to poke a little hole in the sky right here, just come up here like that and put a little blue, and you've got some sky peeking through. He didn't have it, but I don't think it's wrong to have a little sky peeking, peeking through like that. I think that's kind of, I, th I think that's sort of nice. I think it adds something to the picture. And again, you could, this is just one of the small things you can do to make your painting seem a little bit more um, realistic. Now I want to come up here like this on the top of this peach and dry brush a little. This is dry brush. Do you guys know what dry brush is? That's where you have a dry brush, you put the paint on, wipe it all off, and drag it on top of the texture on something else. A little peach fuzz. Um, yeah, that's interesting to me. Okay, so he had this. Now I'm going to come back with some Miss, dark blue. Mick, Mickey is asking, why do I still see some of the um, pastel? Oh, the chalk? Yeah. Um, I don't know, but when it's dry, it'll wipe off with a rag. Right. Right? When it's dry, it'll, it'll wipe off with a rag. I'm going to come around here like this and say, here's a, here's a leaf here. Maybe I've got one um, going here like that. That one's kind of tucked under something. Um, I'm going to bring this one down. You could use a, if you didn't. You could use a white pencil too. You know, and I'm probably on something this small. I wouldn't chalk it in at all. I kind of just kind of did that for you guys. Wouldn't chalk it in at all. But you could, you know, you can certainly not have that. Okay. And it does wipe right off. Once the paint is dry, you just yeah, it'll wipe right off. Take a damn off. brush and take it right off. Yeah, it'll wipe right off for sure. And um, let's see. I think we said that there was a. Um, Oh yeah, I wanted to I'm just gonna just kind of focus a little bit on the leaves now that are coming um, down over here like that. Let's see. Well, someone Gosh. was asking when scrolling by. I've been offered to do commission pieces, and I keep saying no occasionally. Is it a bad thing to say no? Well, it depends what people want. You know what I mean? The commission pieces are interesting. They can be. I, I've had. I've been really stung with commission pieces, and I've done very well with them. Um, you've got to be really clear about what it is you're going to be painting, okay? And because um, you're not a mind reader. Yeah, and well, the thing of it is, is that that people, you know, it's got to be written out, and you want half the money up front. So even if they hate it, they've commissioned you. So even if they hate it, that you're going to at least get half the money for it. If they don't want to pay the other half, they don't get the painting. But you can maybe turn around and sell it. But but you've got to have. Um, You've got to have some control over um, uh, of the of the of, of the work, and then then it's got again. It's got to, if it's like a portrait, boy, I'd stay away from those. No one ever thinks they look like themselves. Uh, maybe it's most common for most artists, and what we've seen are dog portraits. Now he has something very light next to this um, peach right here, so I'm just going to put that in there. Just a little bit of light green. And then he had a dark green next to it. Came down like this. Okay. And we had a dark green leaf that's going like that. So that, that little peach is hidden back there. This one is not. Let's see, we've got a nice leaf coming this way. On here, I'm kind of looking at a combination of his, of what I painted and a photograph of his I'm looking at right now. Sort of a combination, but there you go. I'm going to say this is nice, and then might dry it one more time to add a few more leaves. But, um, yeah, if you're going to do a commission, um, get, it, get it spelled out completely. It's not, um, because otherwise, you know, then it's, it, it's this never, um, <coughs> it's like almost being with a kid that wants something, and then you say yes, and then they want the next thing and the next thing, and they're never quite happy, you know. They keep escalating. That this this whole project can start escalating on you in a terrible way if you don't have it all written down exactly who's doing what and how much, and when is you when do you when do they expect it, okay, and have it. Then you should be fine. 
right? Then I think, um, then you, then you, then you can be happy about the commission and know that you're, um, going to be, ha you know, that you'll be fine doing it. Okay. All right. Let's just take some last minute drying on this. And uh, I had a really pretty blue leaf right here, and I'm going to put that in some more thalo blue and yellow, kind of a pretty. I did this one leaf, and I had it for a reason here. I did it right here, and I really liked it. It wasn't in his, but I put it in mine because I thought it needed it. It's got a little bit of green to it, but not much. A little bit more of that color and a little bit of this color over here. It's kind of a color surprise. I just needed to something to be woken up here a little bit. Where did that little leaf go? Okay, that's what I wanted to do. So any other questions, John, about that? I mean, on, on that kind of thing? Uh, no. Nope, I think you pretty much nailed it. Yeah, that, that would be the biggest thing, is make sure. I, I can remember doing a commission for a gal here in Texas, and I really am not good with, John will tell you, I'm terrible with numbers. And she said, can you make a painting, like, I don't know how big she wanted it, like 200 by 300, I mean, it was just huge, right? I'm going, sure. <laughs> just no concept of how big she was talking, okay? None. And... Um, that was um, a little bit more yellow oxide. We just don't, we need a little bit more of this color in the leaves, and um, so then I ended up I didn't ha I had to order the stretcher bars ma per custom made, and I had to take all the furn I have a very high ceiling in my living room. I had to take all the furniture out of the living room, and I had to assemble the it took my whole giant living room to put this together on the canvas, special ordered canvas. And I put it up against the wall on my, and painted it, and then I had to take it down and, um, and then somehow get it, roll it up, get it in the truck over to her, and then we had to, her house wasn't big enough to see it. This was for a big, um, she had, a, she had a, 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 a show at the Houston Livestock and Rodeo with her cows, and she wanted this as a, I don't know, something to hang there. There was a big wall she could hang it on, okay? And uh, wow, what a thing. And then they had to take it down, and then they didn't have any, they didn't have a truck big enough to ship it, to, to take it. So then they, they took it down and um, ended up uh, putting it back up at the, for the rodeo, and then they took it down again. And then when she put it in her, um, her company office, uh, which was down in Houston, it was too big to go anywhere, really. And so she she cut it down. I know, you're gasping. She cut it <laughs> down. So while well, she had to hang it somewhere, she paid for it. I guess she wanted to cut it down. She cut she it down. She actually cut the painting? She cut the painting down. And, and so she could hang it in her office. Okay. All right. This is going down here like this. Hey, we'd like to welcome Ed. He's a uh, first-time viewer of the live show. Hi, Ed. I'd like so, to welcome you to the Ginger family. Thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Tune in and see what we're doing. On our live shows, for the most part, there's a lot of chat, chatting and funny stories as I paint stuff, okay? And then as, the, as we go on, the, um, when, we, when you go to our website, which, where we have over 300 lessons that are on our art academy, it's just me talking to you very straight. Um, I might tell you a few stories, but there's not a lot of chat. You know, it's more serious. And some of our videos are as long as four hours. I think the longest one we ever did was five. And um, it's just a, on a monthly subscription basis. Okay, so we're going to put this, put this um, branch back through the peach here like that. Okay, so just kind of hid that behind the tree. So you really don't see that one. They're all kind of hidden. And... Um, and then I need a I need a little more peachy color right here. Um, Kathy says she's so excited. She finally made it to a live show as well. Well, I'm so excited. Where does Kathy live? Kathy, where do you live? Here, let's get the light side of this now. This is our peach color on the outside of this. Okay.
No, it's interesting to see where people are viewing this from, okay? Now here's some cad red medium, and I'm going to just brighten up a couple of these, a couple of spots. There we go. Like Give it a little bit more piz peach pizzazz, how that, and if you take a little purple and, um, ult and um, magenta, okay? That's your dark, we haven't put any of that in, that's your dark uh, shadow, so it's a little purple and magenta, that's your shadow color on these peaches too. That's just Kathy's a, from California. Hey Kathy, so it's early for you. Um, so I'm glad you got to watch it. All right, so a little bit of the darker there. And, uh, oh yeah, these peach, these little branchy things here, you guys, they had these, he did these little bud things like, like this. Just, There'd be the buds coming in. You know, this buds for you. Yeah, this buds for you. There you go. And so he did that, and then there's a little bit of green on the end. So, you know, he did a few of those. You know, I'm not saying you put too many. I mean, you can get carried away with all this stuff. There's a lot going on this tree. Let's get the base on this branch a little bit wider. Think about branches. When you're doing branches, I'm just going to draw in here. If you've got a tree like this, right, and you've got a branch coming off, it isn't this. You've got to give it a shoulder, just like your arm. Think of it having a shoulder. And as it keeps, the farther it goes out, the thinner the branches are. Okay? So pretty much, that's pretty much a given rule on any, any tree you might decide to paint. Now I'm trying to think where I need a little bit more of this light blue color. As you recall, we had a little bit of this blue color um, and where I want to put my sky back, right? So I might want to put my sky back right here. And, and this is fun. Oil paint artists do this all the time. This is their trick. They'll paint something and then they'll come back and um, and then they'll add some sky. So if you need and you want something to kind of show up, you know, you might let's just do that. And then I think on this this peach had um, quite a bit of sky showing there. Okay, and uh, maybe down in here we'll just do a little little sky like that. Okay. And in this works if everything's dry. If it's nothing's dry, then of course that's not very effective at all. All right. And the same thing up here. Do you need to to uh, thin up a branch, anything like that? This would be the time to do it. Would be to just take because as long as you know how you made your sky color, you can do that. Let's just come up here and thin this branch right up there. Just blend that out. Okay. Then take a little of this yellow. About done. A uh, little of this yellow color. Here we go. And uh, you uh, need to be finishing the one up, boss. Uh, what time is it? We have 20 minutes. All right, so that's it for, for this, you guys. Have to be a 10-minute painting. All right, so we are we're, all right. So that's it here, you guys. I'm, I I would say we're done on this. I'm going to call this done. I think we got pretty close to the uh, what I painted before. Now the original was a painting, right? It wasn't a photograph of. No, the original is a painting. This is um this is a guy by the name of Wood Woodridge in 1884. This is the original. 1884. So they had peaches back then, huh? Yeah, they sure did. They had peaches back then. So, I mean, I think we got pretty close to here, don't you think so? I think so. Or just, you know, how would you paint a painting like this? And, of course, this is a faded out piece of paper, so you can't really count the colors with that. But you can go by the, you know, some of the shapes, right? Yeah. So, all right, so we're going to call this one done. And if you um, go back to painting it. No, I just needed to have a little more highlight uh, there. Of course just, you did. There. So I just needed something dark right there. You know, I lost... You know, you want to make sure you have all your darks, too, right? Darks like and that. lights. Got to make sure darks you're darks and, and, and lights. Darks and lights, and, you know, here we go. Here's just, you know, sorry, but, you know, sometimes you want a dark color, and sometimes you want a light color. There you go. All right, I'll stop. This is it. We're going to do our 10-minute our painting. Incidentally, tomorrow night we're going to be live at... Um, 7.30 Central Time, and uh, here is what we're going to be painting tomorrow night. What are we painting tomorrow night? We're painting this, um, this vase with these flowers and this table, and this is another old dead artist. This is a gal. We'll tell you more about her tomorrow night. Um, but, Ooh, you know, this is a lady, and actually she was a housemaid. Hmm. But I thought this was really pretty, and um, we're going to be doing that tomorrow night. I think that would be fun. So if you want to know what color canvas, it would be yellow. 
would be what we would be doing tomorrow. Oh, yeller. So, um, let's see, I had a canvas out, I think, for our, um, what was I doing now? I put everything somewhere. Um, oh, where'd everything go? Here, okay, I, I know I'm doing something here. I'm looking for that. Oh, yeah. So, um, um, if you like more stuff like this, you know, how to do folds, that's on YouTube. You might want to... I showed you how to do the folds on in this uh, video, not the whole thing, but how to do the how to do folds, and also this painting I thought went really well with um, with this one. This is uh, one that's on our our Art Academy website. So if you're looking for paintings that might nice pairs, and also look for our lemon painting that we did on YouTube. We have three lemons that might be very pretty with this. So we've got oh, different kind of themes of summer. Yes. Yes and yes. Yeah, summer winds down and get ready for the fall season. Yes, all right. So I'm going to do real quick with the leftover paint here. I think I'm going to do a um, quick 10-minute painting. I'll see. The reason we're in a hurry, we have to get off. We promised my daughter Cinnamon, who is um, who who does, uh, you may know her as the art chirper. She's, she's going to be on at uh, 2 o'clock. And we promised her we would be off by then. No overlap. We all... Um, did that. So let's just, uh, as I'm talking, this will be some really fast painting here. You guys ready for that? Okay, you have the link to the inner this drawing if you would like to participate in this live activity. Yeah, this is something we do for just our live audiences. We, um, we say if, you, if you're interested and you think you might like to do it, we're happy to um, talk about... Um, uh, you know, we give away one of these paintings, and, we, and I, this is something that I paint fairly quickly in about 10 minutes, as close to 10 minutes as I can, right? As okay. close as you can possibly do it. As close, close, close as I possibly can, right? So there we go, something Renee like that. Renee says she is always really late, Ginger, don't worry. Is she? Apparently she's later than we are. Well, you know, she's got three kids. And, um, you know, and it's a real challenge to get everybody situated so they can go live because somebody always wants something or isn't feeling well or they've got a deal, right? Whatever the, whatever the kiddo's deal is, I mean, there's always something. I have, that's been my experience with, with when you have three kids. You have one kid that's not unusual, right? So, um, uh, you know, this is... Um, this is kind of... A typable link is on the screen, and Judy has given you one. The secret word today is peachy. Who came up with that, Sammy? <laughs> Crazy bear. Can't go wrong with peachy. All right, bear with me here. No Don't bear intended. with me. Get that. <laughs> she is on a roll. I'm on a roll today, right? Oh, gosh, yesterday John and I were filming... Um, we did a new of uh, uh, new video, which will be on our website, on personal art coaching. Just what is it, and you know what can you expect if you had signed up for personal art coaching? What is it, right? And um, so what um, we kept doing these retakes, and it just got funnier and funnier. And finally, and we're doing a new series called "Do You Know? Did You Know?" And did these are you just, know? Just one minute things about something you didn't know, and we'll just throw them into the video somewhere, right? Particularly yeah, when we're traveling. You're going to want to pay attention to those. And uh, we're going to have a contest in January about those. So just January? You You're promising something that soon? You don't think so? Yeah, possibly. Maybe at least, you know, think, think well, we we'll might see. have. We'll see where we're at. <laughs> we'll see where we're at, right? But we're going to do something with them. We're going to do something with them. Uh, you know, somewhere around in um, January, we're going to, you know, so something like that, right? And... Um, All right, the link seems to be working. We're closing in on 100 entries. We have 345 people watching. Uh, and listen, I don't care if you live in Sweden or England or New Zealand or whatever, we'll mail it to you. So don't say, oh, well, I do so far away. They'll never get it. We, can, we pretty much discovered that we can uh, mail these anywhere. Where's the last couple we sent were to New, Zing New Zealand and England, right? Uh, England, yeah. England and so forth. England. The UK. I don't know, people in the UK. We sent something over to Germany, too. Oh, we did, right? Yep, and we did Australia. Okay. 
And, uh, Will we be scrambling the numbers? Yeah, we'll scramble the numbers. So don't don't worry about waiting for the last minute or be the first one in. We scramble the numbers. Scramble like scrambled eggs. Oh, scrambled eggs. Who makes the best scrambled yeah, that, eggs, Ginger? That, that Come makes on. A little, John makes the best scrambled eggs. There you he go. really does. John absolutely makes the best scrambled eggs. No question about it. If you have already won a contest from us in the last 30 days, go ahead and enter again. We don't care. Yeah, we can't keep track of that, no, so we, just have fun with we, it, right? It may, we can barely if, keep track of what we're doing. Are you kidding? Of, you ought to buy a lottery ticket, man. I would buy, if I was winning like that, I'd buy a lottery ticket yeah, If you ticket keep winning sure. them, uh, you know. Um, that's what I'd be doing, right? Okay, let's put a little more yellow out. Of course, a little more yellow. Never have enough yellow. Never have enough yellow. Never have enough yellow. Lady Wolfgang, you're buffering. Try taking your resolution way down. We're putting out a pretty big feed today, and it seems to be going out properly. No issues. So, what on is buffering, my side. John? When somebody says they're buffering, what do you mean by what that? What do you mean by buffering? When you are watching a video, your computer is going to try to download more than you're currently watching, so it's buffering it ahead. You have a little bit of. If you look at a YouTube feed or any, any usually any of the video feeds, you'll see in the video line a little space that's in front of the playhead line, which is usually the colored line. That is your buffer area. That's lets you so you get smooth playback. Okay. So that's what that that's what, that's what you buffering know. So is. buffering so buffering is when it jumps around because I don't think it, that didn't that wasn't an explanation that I totally um, got from No, you. if it jumps around it means you're not buffering. You're you're, you're asking you're asking the system to give you a higher resolution than your internet can accept. So then what do they do? Go to a lower resolution. And how do they do that? It's under the settings of the little gear in the lower right-hand corner. Up there on YouTube? On, your on, on, on YouTube, YouTube. Even on our website, too. Same thing. Little gear. So, so there's a little gear. So if I was watching any old kind of movie, Netflix or anything, I could do that? Nope. It has to be depend on the player. Netflix so, automatically adjusts itself. So no, I, YouTube that, 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 to. That, I've, I've never watched a Netflix movie that didn't buffer all over the place. And it, just, and it seemed to me the more people that were on it, you know, like on a, on a weekend it was worse. Have you ever, yeah. have you ever noticed that? Yeah. More people that were on it trying to watch, right? So, um, you know, that's what it seemed like to me anyway. I don't know about you, right? But um, um, anyway, I'm, we're, we're just painting along here. You guys, just hang in there with me. This is my fall fall colors. Yeah, I don't think you guys are going to get buffering again. We spent a small fortune to upgrade all of our equipment once again because YouTube kept changing things. Are the 10-minute paintings listed on the Facebook page? Judy was so kind. We had set up a Pinterest album that has where you can find all the 10-minute paintings. And what they look like, yeah. And what they I look mean, like. Because, I mean, they're sort of fun, right? I mean, you know, sometimes they're just sort of, they're really spur-of-the-moment things that I do. And, um... Carol says yeah. the simpler term of buffering is it just sits there spinning around and around with no sound. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I mean, because not everybody understands what the word buffering is, and it's all these all these computer terms, John, that have happened in well, the last you know, few the, years. You, I got to say that ninety nine percent of the people understand what buffering is on our channel. I guess you're the one percent that. I'm not saying I don't understand it, but I'm just saying some people might not understand it. I mean, we have people that look on our look at our website, right? And they don't understand it. And they not only do not understand it, okay, but they. Um, they ask us how to sign up for lessons, even though there's something that says sign up here. So I mean, <laughs> and they're on our website sending us the yeah, and they sent us an email saying how do I sign up for the lessons? I really would love to. How do I sign up? And um, and yet and yet and yet yes yes and yes yes and, and yes and yet here we are with the. Um, uh, she said that currently at Wolfgang's. Like, it's a bottom setting is still buffering. Honey, it's you. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because we're putting out the full 1080p at 60 frames of awesomeness per second. 
And we're having no feed problems here. All right, people, it's coming close to an end. You've got like five minutes. Five minutes, people. I would like to do that. Do you? Yeah, it's fun. I did that with the boys and Boy Scouts. What? what? Uh, when we're timing something. Yeah? Because I always put them under more pressure. Don't okay. you get more antsy? You don't. Well, I mean, you see, it does look how fast my little brush is going here now. I must be doing something oh, here, right? Oh, I'm telling you. I've got to put you under what? pressure. Yeah. We're talking about some pressure here now, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're definitely talking about... Um, so under the album tab, I look, but must miss something. If you're looking for the albums, it should be a... I don't know. Did Judy set up? No, I don't think she sent up a Pinterest album that way. No, she, you have not to go pin, to Pinterest. Your Pinterest. If you go to Pinterest, uh, no, no. If you go to Pinterest and just Cook YouTube, Live. we've only done we've only done these since this year. And you go to Ginger Cook Live on the YouTube for this year, you'll see them, because we've only done them from this. Uh, we have we didn't do any last year like that. Okay. Not so, specifically we're doing this year. No, so you 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 would see them. Um, uh, Caitlin Sharp says, thank you. I didn't know what buffering was either, Ginger. Oh, good, Caitlin. I knew there was well, somebody Well, the two else. of you, that would make sense. Caitlin's, a, Caitlin's my <laughs> bud. She knows. She, I'm sorry. There's just so many computer terms that have come in in the last few years that, um, that are just, um, you know, you just have to, you know, it's hard to keep up with it. It is. It, uh, you know, and if you just, you know, you turn around and then there's, um, I don't know, it just seems like there's, I'm, I know this sounds kind of kind of silly, but it just seems like there's a lot. Does that it make is. sense? It's just too much. The blue background that you painted on, what color blue was that? Oh, I don't know. It was just some sort of background that you had, probably ultramarine blue. That's all you ever leave me. You know, it's probably ultramarine blue. It's probably blue. ultramarine blue with white. You know, probably, um, um, Yeah, probably that. I haven't dried anything yet, but I'm this. Oh, this. you're just going for it. Because you're under the gun. Yeah, 211 I mean, people want this painting so far. Okay, all right. Well, it's sort of a nice fall painting. Kind of reminds me of, um, you know, it's, just, it's fall's coming in some parts of the world. It's August, the middle of August. It's starting to get cold in some places. Not well, everywhere. Not Houston. But, <laughs> well, no, not Houston. <laughs> Not yet. Okay, not yet. Not Houston yet. But um, but it could get cold in Houston. You just never know. Yep. You don't know. That's the trick. That you is don't the know. trick. Do you not know? And then there it is, cold. And you didn't know what happened, right? Yep. So true, so true. So now I'm just kind of using up some of the paint here like this. I'm kind of having fun with this. All right. Um, let's put the... Uh, let's see. Let's see. We put the ropes on. Okay. Diane received her tub of towel samples that I won. They are excellent. Must have for a studio. Yeah, we thought so too. Yeah, we just uh, we, think we think they're the cat's meow. Have you heard of that one? The cat's meow. Yeah, that's yeah. That's an old one. That's an old. That's an old one. But well, it's a good there, one. There, but there are, and, and that's the point. There are, um, there are just uh, things that people say. Um, you know, at certain times. Uh, you know, I mean, in certain generations and. You know, when you talk about buffering or stuff like that, those are all new words that are being coined all the time. I mean, I remember when they first talked about something was up in the cloud. I'm going, what cloud? I don't see a cloud. Um, <laughs> uh, it was a that riot. That's still a very hard concept. I, and, and it was a riot to me when they first talked about, um, um, oh, this is, takes you back into the, you know, the 80s when um, 
uh, you know, I, I worked at this car dealership, okay? And um, the, um, they were talking about faxing something somewhere. And I'm going, well, where'd it go? I mean, I'm thinking of the paper flying through the air. So I don't know. I just put it, what, it, t t t what does it do again? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. You know, what does it do again? How did, how did that paper get over there now? I, I don't understand, right? How did, how did, that, ha how did that happen? Okay. All right. Oh, it's I think the cat's we're done. whiskers here. I mean, where, where, where are you, Janet? The cat's whiskers. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, it, it's fun to kind of reminisce here about what all. Well, this it is when you have an international audience because they have similar ones, but it's slightly different. Well, it's like if you ever tried to tell a joke to some, it doesn't translate from one language to another. You know what I mean? Yeah, some things don't. You know, some, some jokes absolutely do, and others just don't translate at all. Okay? So let's see. Let's put a little bit of... Um, here's Naphthal Crimson. Let's get a few all right, little bright colors. remember, closing in. We have 225 or so. All right. A little bit of that. A little bit of... That was just some bright red there. And let's put a little bit of cad red here. Just more of your orange red. This is my favorite color, isn't it? Cad red here. Took me a while to learn that hard copy meant a piece of paper. That's true. Hey, give me a hard copy of that, will you? Yeah. Well, we were talking about address books, and sometimes, you know, I was just saying the other day that it's just having an address book. Um, sometimes it's um, better to have a, um, a hard copy of an address, you know what I mean? rather than put it on a computer device where you can l lose it, because when the device goes down or breaks, then everything in there is gone. Yes? All right, let me dry this. I'll sign it, and I've got two more splotches of paint. You can start giving it away. Okay, where is the Apple tutorial with the folds? I believe that's on our website. I don't think that stayed on YouTube. DigitalCookLive.gallery. Again, we have an auction coming up at gingercookauction.com. So get ready to have your bidding, bidding fingers ready. So you're about done, Gloss? Yeah, I just, had a, I just had to poke a few Five holes minutes. on those All those right, trees. people, this is it. This last is call. It. Last call. Last call. We're about done. We are about done. We're all about right. done. We could have played with this a little more, but I think we're about done. Well, you could have played with it for hours. You could play with any of them for hours. All right. It's fun, so you know. Swing, no. swing in the, swinging in the fall. Swinging in the fall. All right. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna do. You kind of John's closing it off now, oh, yeah. um, which is fine. You're closing it off. All right, we have got a ton of people. Two hundred forty-two. All right, so I'm gonna just to take my. Oh, this is fun. Listen, thanks for playing, you guys. And if you want to take a moment and join us tomorrow night for, um, uh, you know, a live show, we'd be happy to have you. Uh, that might be fun to, to, you know, come play with us. And, um, and we'll be there at the live at 730. And I think I showed you what we're going to be painting tomorrow night. Um, oh, uh, while you're waiting, look at, um, where'd this go? Where'd it go? Is that what fell down? All these... Oh, no. No, no, here, 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 boss, here. Let me get this for you, boss. Sure. Get it for me. Right here. All right. These that's, two. Yeah, these two. I wanted to no, show wait, you. Wait, 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 wait. I've got to make room for them now. Okay, well, let me sign this, and then um, we'll, we'll, I can. not Here, I'm going to sign this right here. Let me back up. Let me turn off the... Let's see, i got it all set up for the next okay. show. All right, we'll so... Let me back it up. He's going to back it up. I want to show right. you what, what some ahead. of the stuff that's going to be in our art academy... Uh, coming up, um, I think I, you know, soon. I think I showed you. For those who joined me late, did you take that picture away already? That painting, that one of Van Gogh. 
You took it away already, didn't you? Well, yeah, you already showed that one. Well, all right. I mean, this is a new one coming up. This is a, on a t 10 by 20. This will be the week after next. This is a, a fall vineyard. Okay? So this is the original Ginger Cook based on a photograph I found. And um, so this, I think, is really cool. And I think this is, again, I think we, John and I talked about this. I think this is about a two to three cookie lesson. Probably more because of, not because of this, but because of the clouds. You really have to, if you haven't done our Back to Basics, that's a video that you can, a series of videos you can own called Back to Basics Series 1. And if you, haven't, if you don't have that where it really shows you how to do the clouds, then you might have trouble doing the clouds. But anyway, that's coming up and uh, for uh, in, on Art Academy for the week after next. And then this is our Wave and Water Master Class for the month. And, um, you know, uh, Deep Forest Falls. And I think that this is, uh, what size was this? 16 by 20, but um, you could make this bigger. And, and I think this is really a cool painting. And it's we don't just do ocean waves in our Wave and Water Master Class, which is a separate than our regular uh, tutorials that we teach on our website. So we just focus on water and try to get really good at that. So here we go, John. Who has won this painting? And I want to put a bird in it while we're talking. Alexa, pick a number between 1 and 243. You ran the number between 1 and 243. 188. Ooh. So who won that? Patricia Nelson. See, by putting these birds back here. Patricia Nelson. Patricia Nelson, congratulations. Patricia um, Nelson, you're the winner. Please use the contact us form on gingercooklive.gallery and send us your mailing address. That would be your right. snail mail, please. Thank you. So that kind of put, did you see, when I put those birds in, what that did was that put them on a cliff. Put the picture, I'm going to raise this one and put that, just leave that one. This is why we dry stuff. Just leave this little bird right here. If you're just joining us now, you missed the Peach Show, you'll need to watch the replay. This is at the end of the show. Somebody just joined us. Yes, you just joined us now. We're just at the end of it now. So here's a couple little birds flying in the background. Kind of get the feeling of flying on a swing. How cool is that? So um, here you go, over a little puddle. And I always had, there were always puddles under our swings. I don't, when I was growing up as a kid, there was always puddles. So thanks for watching, you guys. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, take a moment and do so now. And feel free to share the videos and um, uh, with your friends. Put them in playlists. And come out and check out our Ginger Cook Live Acrylic Painting Club on Facebook. It is a great place to share your art with others and uh, find out what John and I are doing because we always post our latest news there and blogs and all kinds of stuff. So it's a neat place. It's a neat club to belong to. So, And also, um, it's a safe club in that we're very con conscientious of the fact that if you're going to comment on somebody's painting, if you don't have something nice to say, then just don't comment. You don't have to like something, but if, you know, try to, you yeah, know, everybody's nice kind. to say, don't say anything. Yeah, if you don't have nice to say, don't say anything. That's, that's kind of our motto on there. And try to encourage the new people because we're all, everybody's at a different stage in painting. Some people have been painting for years. Other people started last week. So you just can't get too judgy with people's paintings because you don't know what handicaps or cha physical challenges they may be having. Maybe they just went through chemotherapy and they can barely, barely, pick, up, barely pick up a paintbrush. And for them, this painting is um, all they can do. And it's extraordinary. I mean, you, you just don't know. So, you know, try to be helpful to our members. Comment, say nice things. And... Uh, have a wonderful Sunday. See you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, 7.30 Central Time, right here on YouTube. Sammy, take us out of here, buddy, with that famous song by Judy Guitar. Judy, we love you. Thanks for singing this for us, Judy. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. 
Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.